Hello, my name is Matt Kixmuller. I'm the VP of Products here at Pure Storage. In today's video, we're going to go through and understand drive failures in the flash array and how the flash array's RAID 3D algorithms help protect and heal around those. So what you see on screen is the Pure Storage GUI. If you'd like to get a little bit more background on, on how the GUI works, we have a separate video on our site that goes through a demonstration of the GUI itself. So just to give you a little orientation as to what you're looking at, um, we've actually got two uh, shelves and two controllers and a test system here. And we have two initiators hooked up to it that are driving some load. You can see we're doing uh, just north of 100,000 IOPS, about 450 megabytes per second of bandwidth, and delivering that at roughly half a millisecond latency. The system's also uh, just over about 58% uh, uh, full at this point. Um, so at that rate, we're exercising all the back-end garbage collection mechanisms within the array as well. All right, so let's talk a little bit on the whiteboard about what's happening as we drive this I.O. Um, the first thing to understand about the flash array is that most of the processing in the flash array happens asynchronously from the hosts. And we can do that because of a tier of NVRAM devices. Those NVRAM devices are power safe against uh, power loss. They're, they're capacity back, or capacitor backed uh, devices. And basically as data comes in, um, we'll land it into the NVRAM devices and that allows us to acknowledge it back up to the host. So we're going to show you what happens in the event of an NVRAM uh, failure now. Um, all of the I.O. that comes in is actually stored not only in one NVRAM device, but in, a couple, in two mirrored NVRAM devices. And that mirroring is not a straight mirroring, but it's kind of a distributed mirroring algorithm. So you can see now that one of the, the NVRAM devices failed. And so what's happening in the background is uh, all the I.O. is being reshuffled amongst the remaining NVRAM devices. And you can see the performance just uh, keeps on chugging as the flash rate keeps on going. So let's go ahead and, uh, and slide that NVRAM device back into the system. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is how RAID 3D works. RAID 3D is a special form of RAID that we developed here at Pure Storage, and it's really geared around the failure modes of flash. And so in our system, RAID is not done on a drive basis. It's actually done on what we call a data segment basis. So as data comes in the array, we talked about earlier, it's, it's landed on that NVRAM, we do our dedupe, we do our compression. And then the data that's left after all that data reduction actually has to be stored in the flash array. So we start filling up what we call a segment. And that segment is a RAID structure that's destined for disk. So we'll do all our writes into the segment. This segment is actually quite large. It's multi-megs in size. And when the segment is full, we'll cap it off. We'll calculate parity and checksums and other protection devices. And we now essentially have a, a, a segment of data that's ready to be written to the drives. We'll check out a set of drives within the array, we'll persist our segment down to the flash, and we'll release those drives. And so, uh, in parallel, there's many, many segments being written, it's a constant process. And so, data is naturally distributed across the entire array. And so, what you see here at the right is a kind of schematic of uh, a number of segments that have been written across the back of the array. Now, let's go ahead and look what happens when a drive fails. So as we said earlier, we're doing uh, over 100,000 IOPS, less than a millisecond latency. Uh, we've simulated now a couple of drives failing in the system. Now, all of the drives in the system are protected with at least dual parity RAID. So when two drives fail, let's kind of X those out. Um, we don't bother trying to rebuild those drives in place. What we actually do is we go in and we start to reconfigure the parity of the array. We basically look for segments that are now one level down parity, and we use the garbage collection mechanisms within the array to read in those segments, throw away the data we don't need anymore because of overwrites, and write the data we want to keep into brand new segments that are naturally put on the remaining drives in the array. So the array essentially within about 10-20 minutes time reheals around those drive failures. So let's go look over at our array tab and you can see in a little more detail what's happening here. Uh, you can see those two drives that have been lost and you can, if you look at it at the top right you can see two things. First of all that we've had a little bit of a capacity reduction. So the, the flash array treats a drive loss as a capacity reduction in the system. Uh, and you can see that we also have a parity reduction. And so we're at a, a red parity state because we've lost some parity. And in the background, you'll see that number 96.93 start to climb up as the system rebuilds those devices. Now, I mentioned that all the segments in the flash array were at least dual parity. Um, it turns out that uh, because of how we stripe data, if you pick correctly, you can actually lose many more than two drives in the system at a time. And so we're going to go ahead and, uh, and fail a couple more drives here. There you go. You see a couple more drives have failed. Uh, in the background, the uh, parity keeps rebuilding and uh, <clears throat> continues to heal around those, those drive losses. Um, one of the unique things about the flash array, though, is that the, uh, the architecture is not at all tied to the physical geometry of the drives because the RAID is so virtual. 
And so in a situation like this, um, you know, where we're rehealing those segments, we really don't care where the segments live in terms of, of the flash. And the, the architecture is actually so virtualized in the way the RAID works that we can pull out, uh, if you power down the system, you could literally pull out all the drives, swap them around, put them back in different places, and you, the flash ray wouldn't care a bit. And so to simulate that in just a little bit anyway, in the, our sense of that, um, we're actually going to put these drives back, but we're going to put them back in uh, completely different locations. So, uh, so Ravi, my assistant here, will basically swap the locations of those drives, um, put them back into the flash array. And <clears throat> what'll happen, in addition to uh, us not caring about their geometry, whenever a drive is inserted in our array, we actually have signatures that are, are quite complex for all the data objects. And so we can actually sense data objects that are useful to us. And so basically, as these drives are uh, replaced in the system, what the system will do is scan them, understand the, uh, the data objects that are, uh, that are there and that are existing, and it will actually go through and start leveraging those data objects again. And so the, uh, the parity rebuild here is, is actually going to stop uh, because we've realized that there's a lot of uh, useful data on those drives. We'll start using them again, and we're back up to full parity. And so that gives you a, a quick tour of, uh, of what happens in the back of the flash array uh, as we work around failures. So let's flip back over real quick to the, uh, the dashboard. And if you look at the recent history there, you can see that we had quite stable performance through, uh, through that, uh, that uh, multi-drive loss event. The system was able to rebuild parity. Uh, latency never spiked up over a millisecond. We maintain hundreds of thousands of IOPS, 500 megs of bandwidth uh, through that entire uh, data drive loss, rebuild, and uh, reclaim event. Thank you very much. Hopefully that was a, a good first introduction to how resiliency works in the flash array and how RAID 3D is, uh, is unique and different from other arrays out there. Uh, we invite you to learn more. You can read more about RAID 3D on our website, and if you'd like to understand more, you can always contact us and we'd be happy to schedule an in-person briefing via the Contact Us button at the top right-hand corner of our website. Thank you very much.